Hello and welcome to the house of Valentina. I'm Valentina and I'm sitting here sipping on my pumpkin spice latte. One of the videos I created a little while ago was designer tips on how to make Ikea look more expensive, more elevated, more designer, however you want to put it. And I promised in that video that I would give you more tips if you guys liked that video. And since it's almost hit a million views, I thought maybe it was time to share some more designer tips on how to create an elevated look with Ikea. So I hope this sounds like fun. I hope that you want to stick around. We love to share all our designer tips and tricks and makeovers. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you hit subscribe and give the video a big thumbs up. And let us know down in the comments, which of these tips and tricks is your favorite and which one you can't wait to try out. And let's jump in. As many of our subscribers know, we uh, lived actually over in Denmark for about six years. We've been back in the Atlanta area for about another six years, and we just fell in love with Ikea while we were over there. We really love Scandinavian design. We just love the accessibility of design through Ikea. And so even though we're now working in the luxury market here in um, the Atlanta area, it is fun and it is nice to be able to go to Ikea and just sneak off and just peruse a little bit and find some great things. And so we've got an entire playlist. We just love Ikea. So we just love to share our tips and tricks and our finds. In fact, you'll want to tune back in on Friday because we're going to be taking you to Ikea and sharing some of our latest finds with you there. One of the things that I've learned over the years as a designer is that color palette is actually a really big deal. And once you have your color palette, you can create a very elevated look within that color palette and you can shop high end and you can shop low end and you can have all different things at all different budgets and you can go to somewhere like Ikea and even create an entire room that looks very elevated just by simply having a more elevated and chic color palette. I think that a simple color palette where you keep it very neutral, neutrals tend to just read more expensive or elevated. It's not that that's the only option, but I do think that it does typically, it's an easier route to giving yourself a more elevated look. So think about a palette like maybe a black and white palette, a black and cream. You could also think about lots of pale neutrals. There's a lot of different color palettes out there. I'll definitely share more of that with you. But once you have your color palette and you start to shop at Ikea, what you'll find is that you're really you're really honed in to what's going to look good in your space, the kinds of things that you're looking for, and you start getting pickier about what you're willing to buy. And I think that that will really help you to hone into not just, it gets overwhelming. I mean, let's just be honest. You just get in there and there's so many things and they're all over the place. And it's just so overwhelming to try to hone in as to what you should be picking. But once you have that color palette and you know what you're after, it'll make a huge difference. The next thing I like to do is that I like to create a mood board and you can just clip your items, even if you just put them all in your cart. Put all your items into your cart and look at everything together. Uh, if you want to, there's lots of different, I think Pick Monkey is a free one that you can use online and just put your pictures all together so that you can see what the items look like when they're sitting together. So if you wanna grab a sofa, you wanna grab some cushions, even some art pieces or maybe some picture frames, some of the accessories and a rug, and all of a sudden you can see a very elevated look all from Ikea and you can see how it all looks. The next thing you need to make sure to do is it's great to pick out a sofa and it's perfect if that happens to fit. But <laughs> You do need to make sure to use that designer tip to actually measure out your space. And one of the things that I feel downgrades uh, the items at Ikea is that they try to put so much into one space. And I know they're doing that to try to show just how much you can put into a space, but I feel like a paired back space actually feels more elevated. So if you're trying to go for a little bit more high-end designer look, rather than trying to fit as much into the space as you possibly can, I would recommend measuring out your space and think about leaving room to be able to walk through your space to really give yourself that breathing room. If you have the luxury of space, it's something that I think really does make a big difference, but try not to overstuff your room with too much furniture because I think that does really, it makes it just feel a little bit tight and it makes it feel like you just didn't, you didn't even have enough real estate, right? Like 
but an overall perspective, you just didn't have a big enough room for all your stuff. And that makes it immediately feel downgraded. So instead, just size down just a little bit. Don't buy a coffee table that maybe will make the space feel too small. You wanna be able to move around your space and feel comfortable in it. And that's why I think as a designer, I always measure. Always measure, always come up with a color palette, always put things together before I purchase them or recommend them to my clients. And this will get you well on your way to creating something that is absolutely spectacular and beautiful and all on a budget from Ikea. Another thing you can do from Ikea is actually grab their art pieces. And what I've seen year after year is that most designers, most uh, magazines just warn you off of buying art at Ikea because they don't want you to look like you've got something that's mass produced. They're trying to keep you from that or something that's super recognizable as Ikea. Uh, I think the thing that you could actually do is you could either paint over some of their art pieces that they have. I do that all the time. I'll go to somewhere like Home Goods and I'll buy a framed piece and I'll just paint over it and make it whatever I want it to be. The other thing that you can do is that you can take their framed art and create something unique for your for the frame itself. You can put family photos into it and I noticed when we were in Ikea recently that they had lots and lots of family photos in their showroom. I think that's fun and it's very homey, but if you want a more sophisticated, elevated look, I would think about either purchasing or uh, painting your own abstract artwork. It's easier than trying to create something that <laughs> I can't paint something that's actually like of a figure or of, of, of a human face. Like I would never be, I would never be able to actually pull that off. So abstracts are a lot easier to replicate. It's something that you can easily do. So I think that you can take the artwork from Ikea and really elevate it. Another thing that I do all the time is that I take art pieces and I replicate them. So a lot of the Ikea art pieces are a little bit smaller scale, but if you have a big space to fill, it can get very expensive trying to fill it. So what I'll do is I'll take that, that art print, it's either a print or if I got one of their frames, and I will replicate them and use several of them together, maybe across and up, to really create one large installation that will really give you that wow factor. It really looks designer and you bought it all at Ikea. One of my all time favorite things to do from Ikea is to create a hotel look with their bed linens. They've got great bed linen. It's really, really nice. I was just there and I was literally testing everything out and touching everything just to really make sure that I'm not missing anything that's really great or new. And I've got to tell you, I still go back to the sateen finish. I can't remember the name of it, but I'll, I'll leave a link down below for the exact one. They've got some with the sateen finish on them and they just feel so luxurious. They feel so high end. And I personally own several sets from Ikea and they, they are great. I, I use them. I literally change them out on my bed all the time and I just love them. They're, they're really good quality. They're really meant to last and I've had them for years and they've really held up to wear and tear. They have some with the patterns in them if you wanna have a little pattern, but of course a hotel style would be very neutral. You could go with the whites. You can even go with some of the grays and some of the other colors, but just layer that bed up. You can get the inserts from them if you wanna do a duvet. They've got the blankets, they've got the down pillows, they've got all the stuff that you need to be able to create a hotel style look in your bedroom. And I for one think that that just immediately elevates your space. You don't need a lot to finish your bedroom. You can just have that bed dressed really beautifully, a side table. Ikea has lots of great options for side tables, a beautiful chair. I love their, is it Malm? I think it's the Malm, the dresser. No, I can't remember. It's the black dresser. I own several of them and I just love them. And I think that you can create a really beautiful, elevated, sophisticated look with just a few key items. Oh, and don't forget the rug because Ikea has really good rugs too. So yeah, you, you can create a beautiful, sophisticated, elegant look from Ikea for all the rooms in your house. But don't forget the bedroom is one of those spaces. It's the last thing you see when you go to bed and the first thing you wake up to. And you're gonna be there hopefully for at least eight hours. So. I think it's worth investing in and Ikea is gonna really hook you up. I absolutely love to dress up my home with Ikea cushions. I love to keep them on stock. I've got a stash of them in my staging area because 
it's just, they're so affordable and they come in lots of beautiful different colors. And once you have the inserts, I suggest going for the inserts they sell, they're great. You can do their inserts, I suggest the down because then you can really mold it and shape it and just use it year after year without it getting kind of icky on the inside. They're wonderful. I've had some of my inserts from Ikea for 15 years at least. Like my, my kid. <laughs> is younger than my pillows. I mean, I've had some of those literally for years. They they really hold up to wear and tear and use, and they're really soft to sit on, and I just think they're a wonderful thing that you can purchase at Ikea. I love the covers, especially the Sanela. I think the velvet really dresses up a space. They come in lots of different colors, so you can match them to your color palette. I also love that they've got some linen ones. They've got some cotton ones. They're all really affordable, and you don't need a lot so don't feel like you have to have a million pillows because then it really starts to add up in price but for me I love to have maybe two and one you could add extra if that's if you like a more maximalist style or even just have one on each side I think it makes such a big difference you can add one to a chair they've got the They've got the lumbar size as well, so if you wanna do one of those in a chair, you can also add them to your bed, and that'll really take that bed over the top. Pillows are one of the best things that Ikea sells, and they really just nail it, and I can tell you from personal experience that they will last. I absolutely love them, and I know that you will too, so I will leave all the links for the items that I'm showing kind of as they pop up on the screen. I always leave those items linked down below in the show notes for you, so if you're on a if you're on the TV, you'll need to look on your computer or one of your devices to be able to open that area up down below. A lot of you have said you have trouble finding it. They kind of changed it anyways, and so it's a little bit harder to find, but it is there, and I always link up these items for you because I want you to be able to add them to your cart. And even if you don't have an Ikea near you, you can actually pop it in your cart and have it shipped to your house. So yeah, they've got some really great stuff and I will link all of that down below in the show notes. Of course, it's not gonna be a surprise that I think you should be using a throw. I think that throw blankets just add a cozy factor. They help it to also feel a little bit finished in a space. They just add a little bit of a layer and especially for someone like me that I do tend to do a quite pared back look. A blanket just adds that nice little bit of approachability to a space and Ikea has some of the best blankets. They've got some really great throw blankets. They've got some that are boucle, they've got some that are wool, they've got basically everything in between. I have some that I've used for years that are just nice and thin and they look really great just sitting over the arm and then I've got others that are just thicker and they're more cozier. But either way, using a throw blanket to really dress up a space is a trick that I always use as a designer and it's something that you can get at Ikea. I was just there and I was looking through the section and I was like, wow, they just have so many gorgeous options. I have used so many of those throw blankets over the years in so many of my clients' homes. A throw blanket is just a great trick to really dressing up your space, and I love that Ikea has so many great options. You really can, again, go back to your color palette, add it to your mood board, and see if you need a little bit of contrast. Do you need something that'll give you a little bit of texture? A throw blanket can offer you so many different options. You can have them over the arm of a chair, on the sofa, on your bed. I, have to, I usually have one over my desk chair, and even in the dining room, I just really like to have throw blankets because I get cold, <laughs> which is why I'm like one of those people that's wearing leather pants in August. But uh, yeah, I just think that they're really great. And uh, you can actually go back and check out the Ikea playlist because year after year I've recommended so many of their different blankets and I've given you very specific items. But again, I'm gonna link up down below, not only the Ikea playlist where you can check out lots and lots of items that I've handpicked from Ikea, but also you can check out the items that I'm showing you today. Another thing that I like to do as a designer is that I love to add books. I think that books really elevate a space, they bring texture into it, and they really give you a moment where you get to express yourself. And I use them all the time as art by opening them up and showing what's inside of them. I also stack them and it helps really just fill out your space. And so even though it's not something sold at Ikea, you're able to add it to your Ikea pieces and really create a very designer look. I have a lot of favorites and I share them all the time. In fact, even 
on my Amazon, I've got them separated out for you where you can just literally shop my favorite coffee table books, the ones that are on my coffee table. I've got some, I've got so many beautiful books. Uh, one of my favorites is the Joseph Duran book. It's uh, actually a really affordable designer book and his, uh, his designs are really just, they, they've had such a big impact on other designers and his work is just really beautiful. And you can leave a book like this just sitting open and it's just so beautiful and inspiring just the way it is. But you can also have it stacked with other books. It's really lovely. I've got the Aliyah book, which is actually a fashion book, but I love this one because I can actually leave the cover sitting out by itself and it looks really pretty in that taupe color and then separate the book. So I get two books in one, uh, two decor items in one. And these images are spectacular. It really is art. And so you can have it open, you can have it shut, you can have it in the sleeve, you could have them separated, and it's really just a gorgeous book. And uh, yeah, check out my Amazon. We were just doing an Amazon Live, and I, I talked about a lot of my favorites that are in my book stack. So make sure you check out my Amazon storefront. I'll leave a link for that as well if you're interested. But there, you'll be able to see a lot of my favorites, and of course, Amazon's a great place to be able to pick them up on a budget. I love to finish out a room with a fragrance. I think that a fragrance is just, it really takes a room that's just kind of blah to a room that just envelops you and it really invites you in and it really just makes it feel really elevated. And Ikea has a lot of options for being able to add a fragrance. They've got some really great candles. We've just purchased their um, wood fragrance that smells amazing. We've used their vanilla ones. We've used, I think we've used almost every fragrance they have. We just really enjoy their fragrances. Now, sometimes they come in a jar or a container that maybe isn't the exact style that I'm looking for. So what I'll do is I'll actually pop them into like a hurricane vase. You can uh, put stuff around them if you want to. You could put moss in there to cover up the, the color of the candle if it doesn't match. You could put them inside of a planter as well. It just, they just need to be open, right? So that the flame and everything is able to be clear without you know catching on fire. But um, yeah, it's a great way to be able to really up the substance of what you have. Of course, to me, one final step is that candles also add a lot of ambiance. And I talked about that in the last video about having lighting and what a huge difference it makes. But I think also lighting candles really just adds that sort of atmosphere. So you can add fragrance with the fragrance candles that they offer, but it's also really nice that you can also, and we do this every time we go, we stock up on the candlesticks, we stock up on the tea lights and the non-scented candles because adding that sort of ambiance into your space just really helps it to feel moody and elevated. And in the evening, especially when the lights are dimmed, you can really just enjoy your space. I think that these will help you to create a beautiful designer look with Ikea items. So I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. Make sure that you look down below because I'll have everything linked up. I will also link up the other Ikea video that I mentioned in the beginning that gives you the other designer tips. Let's take that video to a million. I'll, I'll leave the link, you guys can go check it out. And it was fun for me to actually go back and watch that one because I was like, oh yeah, oh, those are, oh yeah, those are good tips for Ikea. And then it got me so excited watching that video Video, that's why I had to go for a visit. So <laughs> make sure you hit subscribe, tune back in on Friday because we're gonna be taking you to Ikea and sharing with you our latest finds, the things that we're really excited about that we're using to elevate our own home and to create a beautiful designer look in our own home. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm gonna finish sipping my pumpkin spice latte and get back to work. So thank you again and I will see you in the next one.